I would like to introduce Dr. Ronan Rubinoff. Ronan was the person that proposed Mobilised way back in 2017 um, and was, our, uh, was the co-lead. I had the pleasure of working with him for the first four years of Mobilised. He stepped away, but we're delighted to welcome him back to give us his perspective of the then and now. Thanks, Ronan. Thank you, Lynn, and it's great to see everyone here again. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're in this business long enough, they make you the historian. And that's kind of what I'm going to do today, just to remind you that, you know, the idea of, count of measuring mobility has been around for a long time. And, uh, of course, Leonardo da Vinci did it first, like he did many things, uh, with this uh, drawing for, you know, the way we used to do six-minute walk, running around behind the subject with a wheel uh, that we got from the Home Depot. And, in fact, that's what he invented. Um, and then Abraham Louis Perle um, actually created the first um, wearable device to measure steps in 1780. And if you look very closely, you see that the 12 o'clock position is 10,000 steps, uh, which fits, right, with what we now talk about. The idea of counting steps uh, more recently, of course, goes back to 1965 in Japan, where Professor Atana was worried about the growing obesity of the Japanese population, um, he should have come to America, um, and uh, created the idea that if we just got people more physically active, that would counteract that capacity and develop the manpo meter, which you see on the right-hand side advertised. Um, and of course, we've come a, f a little bit further since then, but we've also developed the concept that this matters for medical endpoints that we all care about, for hard endpoints such as survival and disability and so on. These are data from Stephanie Studensky about how measure gait speed at any particular age predicts survival at that age. Um, and you will notice that women walk faster than men, and they live longer, too. Um, and uh, I suspect there's some connection there. But of course, functional capacity is another aspect of what we measure with mobility. And as you see, there are thresholds that are fairly well-defined for when you can't do certain things. I mean, the bottom line is humans won't do things that make them short of breath, at least not for very long. Um, and we're seeing, of course, uh, that decline with age as how people wind up requiring nursing home placement and that kind of support uh, that makes the end of life uh, both difficult and expensive. So, of course, the idea that Lynn was telling you about how the private-public partnership came about was around all of these issues and um, the idea that no single industrial company in pharma would be able to do this alone led to the notion of trying to do it as a consortium, which we had done before for other kinds of, quote, pre-competitive uh, situations where there is an opportunity for everyone to learn together and then create something that would give us a new playing field for uh, capabilities in drug development. Um, and exactly what you saw from Lynn, the, uh, the uh, issues at hand in terms of developing digital endpoints. Um, technically, by 2017, when we started this, the, the technical validation had come a fair ways, but the regulatory acceptance had become the new bottleneck. And that's really what we were after trying to fix with Mobilize-D, and where I think Mobilize-D is going to have a big impact in the coming years. So just to take you through this a little bit, um, it, at Novartis, where I was working, we started our first mobility assessments in 2011, and by 2015, we're on our third generation device. And as I said, we had recognized by the time these results were starting to come out from these devices that our problem wasn't more measurements. Our problem is what to do with the results, what to do with the data. And, um, you know, there, it, it's very clear um, in almost any career that it's smarter to be lucky than it's lucky to be smart. And um, that's, I think, what happened here. Um, the Innovative Medicines Initiative, as you all know, is a joint undertaking of the European Union and the European Federation for Pharmaceutical Industry, uh, FPIA. And at that time, uh, several things happened that coalesced together to make Mobilized feasible. One of them was that the head of FP at that time was the CEO of Novartis, Joe Jimenez. Second thing was that the IMI was reaching a point where they had the worst possible bureaucratic outcome, unspent money, and nowhere to put it. 
And so for someone like me, um, you know, working in a company, it's always nice to solve your boss's problem. It's even better to solve your boss's problem by spending his money when he wants you to do that. And that's exactly what happened here. We, they, there was a real push that was called Think Big to find you know, innovative projects that would really make a difference to how drugs are being developed. Because you know, this is not an altruistic uh, kind of business. You know, in pharma, we're trying to make new drugs and we need new tools to do it. And that's what Diamond was already kind of coalescing into when all of a sudden there was this pull for spending the money, and that's how Mobilize came about. Um, so in January, we'd written this abstract, and then there was a meeting uh, about how to um, you know, sort of uh, make big bang type projects. And by September, we had full sign-on from FPA. I had our first face-to-face -face meeting in Basel back then, for those of you who were there. Um, and then we had the first call uh, uh, published in November of 2017. By February of 2018, eight consortia had applied. There were three finalists, and of course, Mobilize D was the so one that was selected. Um, in April, that was formalized, and then uh, there was a full submission round, stage two round, as uh, some of us remember the pain of that. And uh, by February 2019, you know, with all bureaucratic speed, uh, we got everything done, and then the kickoff meeting uh, was a bit south of here in Newcastle in April of 2019. And today, uh, you know, somehow six years have passed. Um, so you saw this picture already from Lynn. This was the kickoff meeting then. Um, you all know uh, the power of this consortium, how many different specialties and backgrounds and, you know, <laughs> dedication has gone into making this feasible. And to your credit, it's really remarkable that all of this was done despite the pandemic and despite all of the, uh, you know, sort of logistical issues that came up along the way. So um, I would just like to say thank you very much for the opportunity to have been alongside you for all of this. And uh, we look forward now to the next steps. Thank you.